For this podcast, I will read the poem first and then discuss my reactions to it. The Little Dances, A London Vision Lonely, save for a few faint stars, the sky dreams, and, lonely, below, the little street into its gloom retires, secluded and shy. Scarcely the dumb roar enters this soft retreat, and all is dark, save where come flooding rays from a tavern window. There, to the brisk measure of an organ that down in an alley merrily plays, two children, all alone and no one by, holding their tattered frocks through an airy maze of motion lightly threaded with nimble feet, dance sedately. Face to face they gaze, their eyes shining, grave with a perfect pleasure. The poem moves through a cluster of contrasts, between dark and light, sound and quietness, and between different kinds of sound, between the impersonal and the intimate, loneliness and togetherness. It also contrasts loneliness with aloneness to show that they are not always the same thing, and it progresses from what seem like unpromising materials to a magical end in the beautiful image of the two little girls dancing. The poet starts by directing our view upwards into the night sky, which he describes, oddly, as lonely, as well as dreaming. Dreaming about what, we don't know, and we don't really need to know, because our attention is swiftly brought earthwards and into the anonymous urban street, which, like the sky, is also lonely. Our vision narrows further, accommodating the presentation of the street as little, as retiring, and also secluded. Its littleness contrasts with the vastness of the sky beyond, but nevertheless shares the sky's sense of solitude. At this point the darkness and solitude are thrown into relief, partly by the encounter with the city's dumb roar, but mainly by the light that floods from a tavern window. The emotional tenor of the poem changes from now on and becomes more positive. The light from the window allows us to share the sight the poet has of the two young girls and to witness their moment of quiet exaltation. The light is accompanied by the music of a barrel organ. This contrasts with the silence of the stars above and with the dumb, undifferentiated roar of the surrounding streets. Like those streets, though, the organ and its musician are out of sight. The music brings a merriness absent from the sky because it implies the idea of community, something shared, and thus a way out of solitude. Now the two children appear, the first and only humans we see in the poem. The poet makes sure we understand their specialness by emphasising their aloneness, doubling up all alone with no one by. Again, they're alone, but not lonely, because they have each other. That one simple phrase, their tattered frocks, reveals they are poor and working class. Despite their situation, however, the girls show themselves capable of the sophistication and delicacy necessary to perform their dance through an airy maze of motion. The dance itself is like a maze, and Binion artfully alludes to the labyrinth on Crete which housed the Minotaur, killed by Theseus, who used a thread to find his way back out, the girl's maze of motion being lightly threaded. For the girls, there is no danger of a Minotaur in a labyrinth, but they are finding a way out, if only temporarily, from the restraints of their situation through their dance. The dance is an aesthetic act that has no obvious practical purpose, but it's like a ritual, it's formal, measured, like the organ music, note how the last word, pleasure, rhymes with measure, and brings the girls together, hence face to face, in an act of transcendence in which body and mind work as one. They transcend their own poverty, they transcend the loneliness of their situation, of being outside the tavern where their parents may be drinking. That's why their eyes shine. They are children, still innocent, yet they act sedately like adults. 
and their dancing, which produces a perfect pleasure, is at the same time grave, that is, serious. Serious, because while they dance, they are in touch with something beyond mundane experience. <laughs>